Could Lewis Hamilton win on enemy turf? Were Ferrari going to win their home race for the first time since 2010? And was there anything Red Bull could do to get a podium? Find out in this video. There was a threat of rain for the race, but thankfully it did stay away. As we got a great race where Lewis Hamilton went on to take the win. Hamilton wins and Raikkonen second, Bottas third, Vettel fourth and Max Verstappen in fifth. Then it's Ocon 6th, Perez in P7, Sainz in P8, Stroll 9th and Sorokin in 10th. Then from P11 to P16 is Leclerc, Van Dorn, Hulkenberg, Gasly, Ericsson and K-Mag. With Roman Grosjean being disqualified from the race results. With Daniel Ricciardo, Fernando Alonso, Brendan Hartley retiring from the race. Now though let's see how the top teams did in this epic race. Coming into this Grand Prix, Mercedes were not expected to take the win. But after Hamilton passed Vettel at the start, there was now a very good chance of it. As on the safety car restart, he closed down Kimi Raikkonen and actually passed him. But then Raikkonen got him back going into the second chicane. But until the first pit stop, Hamilton was very close behind Kimi. And after Kimi pitted before Hamilton, it was now time for hammer time. But after Lewis pitted, he was now 4 seconds behind Raikkonen. But thankfully for him, Valtteri Bottas held up Kimi a lot, allowing Lewis Hamilton to close up to the back of Kimi when Valtteri Bottas eventually pitted. Then Hamilton, to win the race, completed a brilliant overtake at the first chicane, going right round the outside and deservedly getting past. And then he went on to win the Grand Prix. A very, very deserved victory. But for Bottas, despite finishing in third, it was not that great of a race. As for pretty much the entire race, he was stuck behind Max Verstappen and could not find a way past. But he still ended up on the podium because of Verstappen's penalty for hitting Bottas. He did do very well though at holding up Kimi Raikkonen for the team's sake. Because if he did not hold up Kimi, then Lewis may not have won the race. So great teamwork there by Bottas. But for Mercedes, this is a very important result. And this could be the result that goes on to win them both titles. And right now, they certainly do deserve it. Ferrari, though, went on to blow what could have been another race win. First, with Sebastian Vettel colliding with Lewis Hamilton on the first lap. Now, I don't think anyone in this incident should be penalised, but it is more Vettel's fault. Lewis Hamilton completed the pass, but then Sebastian hit the side of him. But then Sebastian went on to claim that Lewis did not leave him enough room. Which for me is totally ridiculous. If Lewis leaves him more room, then Lewis is going to go off the track. Lewis left him enough room. But after that incident, Vettel had to drop to the back of the field because of an early pit stop. After he broke his front wing on the side pod of Hamilton. Then slowly but surely came through the field to finish eventually in 4th place because of Verstappen's penalty. Not a good race at all for Seb. Kimi though tried everything he could to get the race win but his team made a mistake on strategy by essentially pitting Kimi too early and also falling for Mercedes' dummy pit stop. That really did cost him when it mattered, as Lewis, when he passed him, had much fresher tyres. And that is what went on to deny Kimi a win, a win that was probably deserved if he got it. But when it comes to the championship, Ferrari now have to stop making mistakes because one more might mean that Mercedes are going to come out on top. But realistically, I don't think Ferrari can go seven races without making a mistake. That's another missed opportunity. For Max Verstappen, he did all he could to try and get a podium. And on track, he actually did get it. But of course, with that penalty, he finished down in fifth. Now, in my opinion, his penalty was wrong. Now, yes, Verstappen did move across, but Bottas did have enough room. And it was Bottas hitting Verstappen, not Verstappen hitting Bottas. For me, it was not worth a penalty at all. But despite that, Max was very good during the race and very quick. In a car that should not be up in P3. Daniel Ricciardo's race though was miserable. Having another reliability issue. Daniel just cannot buy any luck. But at least for Red Bull, the next race coming up is Singapore. Where they should at least be good. So hopefully the pain is now over for the team. Now though, let's look at the driver's standings. 
Lewis Hamilton now leads by 30 points from Sebastian Vettel with Kimi Raikkonen in third. Then it's Bottas in fourth, Verstappen in fifth and Daniel Ricciardo still in P6. It's going to be a tough ask for Vettel to try and catch Hamilton. But it is still definitely possible. Now though, let's look at how the midfield teams got on. It was another awful race for McLaren. First with Fernando Alonso retiring in the first 10 laps. And with him retiring, that was their only chance of points. Because Van Dorn was never going to get any. Another poor weekend for McLaren. Can things improve for Singapore? Realistically, I don't think they will. This car is just too bad. For Renault though, it went on to be a good race. With Carlos Sainz impressively finishing up in P8. And that is a very important result considering that Roman Grosjean was disqualified from P6. And these four points you never know could be the difference between 4th and 5th in the Constructors. It wasn't easy though as at the safety car restart he did go off the track trying to pass Roman Grosjean. But eventually he did get the points that he did deserve. Hulkenberg though would finish outside of the points. And because of his early pit stop there was nothing really he could do to get into the points. But overall a good race for Renault. Hopefully in Singapore where they should be good they can pick up some more points. For Force India it was another brilliant and important result. Finishing in 6th and 7th with Ocon and Perez. Picking up an impressive 14 points. As Force India are now P7 in the Constructors. And they really could catch McLaren for P6. But for Perez it was not that easy getting P7. Especially after the contact he made with Kevin Magnussen in the early laps. And it was quite a lot of contact. But after getting past McLaren's and Williams's and the runner of Carlos Sainz he did finish in P7. A very good drive from near the back of the field. Don't be surprised if Force India continue like this in Singapore. Williams very surprisingly went on to score points with both cars. With Lance Stroll finishing P9 and Sergei Sorokin in P10. That's Sorokin's first points in his F1 career. And he thoroughly deserves it. He has worked very hard in 2018. But Williams did deserve this result because they did have the pace to get this result. The only real downside is that this is probably going to be the last race where Williams actually score points. Hopefully now they're going to focus fully on 2019. And try and improve the massive deficiencies of that car. Toro Rosso's race went on to be terrible. With Pierre Gasly having an awful start and going off the circuit quite a lot. And Hartley retiring from the race before he even made it down to turn 1. Because of massive contact with Marcus Ericsson. But with Gasly after that poor start they did not have the pace to come back through the field. But sometimes that is just the way it is. In Singapore though Toro Rosso should be very very good. As they have an excellent record at that track. So do not be surprised if Toro Rosso score big points in Singapore. A good race for Haas turned into a disaster. As after Roman Grosjean finished P6 in the race he was disqualified on Sunday night. As Renault protested against what they thought was an illegal flaw. And the FIA agreed and disqualified Grosjean. Which is quite sad for Roman because he did drive very well all weekend. And it all comes to nothing. Haas though are appealing the decision. For K-Mag though his race was absolutely horrible. After going off the track a couple of times and then being hit quite hard by Sergio Perez. And then after that he was strolling around at the back of the field. And he finished last of all the runners. So not good for Haas in their fight for fourth in the Constructors. And finally is Sauber whose race was not really that much better than their qualifying. As they went on to miss out on points. And for this weekend I am very disappointed again with Sauber. With the car they have at this track they should be scoring points. And for me there is no excuse. And it's going to get even worse for Sauber as next up is Singapore. A track where they're most likely going to struggle. Before I go though let's look at the constructor standings. Mercedes continue to pull away from Ferrari with Red Bull clearly still in third. Ferrari are going to have to get their act together if they're going to win at least the constructors. Then because Grosjean was disqualified, Renault are now 10 points ahead of Haas in 4th. With McLaren in P6 and now Force India in P7. I think Force India will catch McLaren by the end of 2018. 
then it's Toro Rosso P8, Sauber P9 and Williams a P10. But at least they did gain 3 points. But that is it for the 2018 Italian Grand Prix. And what an enthralling race it was. Hopefully more excitement is around the corner in Singapore. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back in about an hour's time with a live post-race Q&A. Don't forget as well to join my Discord server. There's a link down below in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of the 2018 Italian Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazer HD. goodbye.